All right, welcome back if you're still with me. Probably not, um, at least for the library program. But anyway, let's keep going. If you're following, good job. Okay, we're going to make a um, little trap here, I think we said. Yes. So, what do we do? Well, let's find, find a trap that works first. Let's go back to our little sprite pack. Um, let's see. That is a... Oh, what is out in other? Okay, well, those are not useful. Uh, traps. Okay. So what do we have here? What is interesting here? Falling platform. Okay. Oh, spike head. Fire. Okay, why don't we use these? Um... Did this this guy kind of like smiling? <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Well, why don't we no? Um, how about a saw? Okay, at, at least a saw move, right? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do a saw. Okay. So I guess right click, insert new object, add a new sprite, click somewhere, uh, and then we're gonna import the saw image. Yes. Uh, drag this in here. Import from sprite strip. Replace the whole animation. We are going to loop the animation. Make this like ten. Play it. All right, that looked pretty decent. Okay, uh, so we got a little trap here. Called saw. And is it on layer zero? Yes. Okay. Um, Okay, why don't we move, make this uh, a little bit higher again, so we can select it. Uh, two, maybe? Okay, yes, okay. So, uh, this is kind of evil. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so it's more manageable. So you will have to dodge the Dodge the saw, I guess. Um, as you're going through it, like this. Okay, well, let's hope this game is beatable. Can put it like right here. Okay. Alright, so we need to program this such that if you touch the saw, you also die. So we're going to go to event sheets and then, the, well, if the saw is in contact with the player, or if the player is in contact with the saw, it doesn't matter, um, we will, what are we going to do? Well, we can just copy the thing that, the dying sequence, right? Uh, so we, so we have something if you fall out of the level, right? Like, yeah, this is the dying sequence. If you fall off the level, set the timer and then you know, say that you died. So we'll copy this. No. Copy. And then right click. Insert below. No. How do we paste this? Add a new action. Okay, why don't we just add something? like random first here ah okay that's a bad one okay right click paste and then i can delete this one all right so if i hit the saw i will just die like before okay let's try this hello <laughs> welcome to platform world Okay, let's try this again. All right, it worked. <laughs> you know, it would be nice if we can do like a little disappearing animation before we restart the game. Hey, why is it not restarting? What's going on? 
Okay, why is this not restarting? Uh, oh, maybe we don't have the timer object. All right, well, why don't we add the timer back object back into it? Remember we had a timer object that actually contained the timer? Okay, let's try this again. Hello, welcome to Platform World. So yeah, world. I guess the timer is in the timer object, so if you don't add it, then it won't work properly. Um, Alright, so that's it for the trap. It's very easy. It would be nice if we can do a disappearing animation. Um, and they actually come with one hair. Let's see, okay, we have, sorry. Go back to the main character pack here. Uh, see? Appearing, disappearing. So, so here's a challenge for you. Can you make a new timer such that if you know, you you delay the restart, and we will change the animation? Actually, since it um, okay, why why don't we do that now? <laughs> I'll do that with you. Um, it shouldn't be that hard. So let's go to the player, uh, and then we have to edit the animation. We'll add a new animation call like die something like that um, so we drag this disappearing animation in here some sprite okay and then we're not going to loop this let's see okay so that's all it's going to do uh, so in the event sheet Instead of deleting the uh, player when it's in collision with the saw, we are going to add this. We're going to change the animation to disappearing, so it looks like it's just going out. Um, so we're going to set the animation to wait. What did I call it again? Like die, I think. Let's check. Uh, yep, that's it. Okay, let's give that a try, see if that works. Hello, welcome to Platform World. Yay! Yikes, okay. Okay, let's try again. Hello, welcome to Platform World. Oh. Hmm. Oh, something is wrong here. Hello, welcome to Platform World. It seems like you just turned right back into the other animation. Why is that? Okay, well, um... That's because when I hit the arrow key, remember how with the arrow key that changed the animation? So I guess we do need to delete the object after the animation is complete. So how do we do that? Uh, hmm. Well, there's a couple ways to do that. We can set a timer to... We can set the timer to be a little bit shorter, so uh, right after the animation finished, we will delete it. So, let's see. I wonder if I can add a secondary sub event here. If the player animation is playing, maybe if the animation die is playing. Hmm. Well, I'll be right back. I need to check if this is a way to check if the animation finished playing. Alright, sorry, I'm back. Alright, so we're gonna do this. So when the, f so the w ideal way to do this is when the dying animation finish, we want to delete the um, player, right? So we're gonna add on to the player. 
uh, animation on finish. That means if the die animation is finished playing, we are going to delete the player, destroy the player, and hopefully that'll work. Uh, let's see if I get it correct this time. Ah, uh, no! <laughs> it seems like if I get too close to the wall, I get stuck sometimes. Um, okay, let's try this again. Well, that. Hello, welcome to Platform World. Hmm, that didn't quite work, did it? All right, I'll be right back. Debugging again. All right, I'm back. Okay, I'm, I promise this will work this time. Okay, so uh, I think what happened is that we're manually setting the animation when, uh, like, here we're overriding the animation, like when we move left and right, and when the player is not moving. So I think it's preventing this die animation from ever finish playing. So we need to stop. Uh, we need to stop them from playing playing the animation when the character is dead because if you're dead you're not supposed to play any animation other than the dying animation. So we're going to add a new variable. Remember the variable thing we did earlier? So there's a new set of variable. Variable like you um like it could be a number but it can also be a true or false value. So yeah we're gonna name this dead and then it's a boolean. Boolean means that it is either true or false. Uh, so initial value we're gonna say is false. So basically, when the um, game start, we want to set to so go to system. We want to set the value of. Oops, we want to set boolean. Okay, so we want to set the dead variable to false. So when the game begin, when the level begin, the player is not dead, so it's false. It's false that the player is dead. Okay, so, uh, but when the player is in is in collision with the saw, we want to set it so that set boolean set that so that that uh, variable is true. So we're saying that when the player is in collision with the saw, um, that is true. The player is dead. Ah, so now with this we can go over here back to the animation stuff so when the player is not moving uh, we want to set the animation to idle so that worked but we also want to make sure that it's only when the player is not moving and when the player is not dead that we play the idle animation so you can right click add sub event and then system and then we want to check uh, the variable is boolean set dead. So if it is dead, uh, what we want is if the player is not dead, we play this animation, right? So we need right click and invert it. If x mean invert, like not dead. Okay, sorry. So if the dead uh, variable is not true, that means it's false, then we're going to play the idle animation. So same thing here, add sub event. Uh, we're going to do the thing again. Same as before. Uh, so yeah, this might seem a little bit confusing right now, but uh, the more you do it, um, if you ever pursue computer science, this will get easier. Okay, so let's try this. Hopefully this will work. And hopefully I don't miss the platform. Hello, welcome to Platform World. Alright, let's see if... Uh... <sighs> I keep missing that. Maybe I should make a cheat code or something like that. Okay. Come on! Oh, 
All right, it works. <laughs> Hello, welcome to platform. All right, World. so this section is a little bit longer than I expected to. But anyway, to see to add a trap is very not, it's really not hard. It's like things you already learned. Um, so I think this is as far as we should probably go. We should wrap this up with um, so customizing your own game with your own assets. So I'm going to show you how to make your own animation and draw your own art. Uh, so that way you can make this game completely yours because right now we're just using someone else's uh, art asset and that's not good so we want to draw our own so I'm going to show you quickly on how to draw your own stuff with the animation editor uh, and then I'll show you how to share your game on the internet so you can share with your friends online um, because if we look at the event sheets do you see this thing here you have eight events remaining uh, that's because we're using a free version, so there's limits to it. Um, we did not log in, so I say as a guest, you may use up to 25 events in a project. Um, so we can register for an account, and to get more, I think it gives you 50. But still, like this is a free version. Uh, they have a paid version that have a lot more stuff. Um, but yeah, it's like 100 bucks a year. That's expensive. So anyway, just stick with the free version for now unless you're really into it. I'll see you on the next video and I'll show you how to uh, customize the game with your own animation. Okay, so see you on the next tutorial.